Well, thank you. Hey, good morning, sisters and brothers. And uh, like you, I'm uh, thrilled when I see children like that in the worship. And I'm grateful to come back uh, to the Seattle Community Church and to be with you. This is Palm Sunday. And my experience is that most people really don't understand what what it's about um, and so I want to explain that today How, palms don't grow in Jerusalem they had to be brought there and um, so we have a text and the text could be taken from Matthew Mark Luke or John for all of the Gospels have it but you will see uh, in a moment uh, the text from Mark uh, and what I will do is not read the text to you, but rather explain uh, it in a kind of uh, quiet way. Uh, if you ever get the impression that Jesus was following a script, I want to tell you you're right. There is a backstory to Palm Sunday, and it is a huge story. And when we understand Palm Sunday, we realize it's more than a parade. It's, it's literally the drama of our salvation. Jesus is acting out a drama that is at least 2,000 years old. And so while we're looking at this text in Mark, Jesus literally said to his disciples, I want you to go to a certain house where you'll see a donkey, a small uh, young colt that's never been written, ridden before and bring that tell the owner the master has need of him how about that steal the donkey you only do it with the owner's uh, permission uh, and then Jesus gets on this donkey and rides into the city the crowds are there because it's the Passover to Pentecost season there's 50 days of celebrating and Jews from all over the world come together for those 50 days so there's a lot of people and when someone gets the idea there's a parade they're going to show up and so they see Jesus on this donkey coming into the city and they begin to gather around and wave uh, the palms and Jesus rides down and in the center of the old city is the temple square it looks like the size of a football field it's actually bigger than that uh, and on one end of it used to be the temple and the temple was built over a a unique rock a rock that has history and Solomon put the temple over that rock and then the Babylonians destroyed that temple and so the temple got rebuilt after the Jews came back from captivity in Babylon and they built a second temple on the same spot not as nice as Solomon's not as big but it was there and it was that temple that Jesus knew and it was built on the rock and if you go to Jerusalem today you won't see the temple because it was torn down by the Romans the Jews rebelled against the Romans the the, the Romans came and conquered again so that temple was destroyed and then after Muhammad in 632 died one of his followers came and built a beautiful dome of the rock uh, uh, memorial and you will see that if you see any picture of old Jerusalem you'll see this octagonal building and on top of it is a golden dome and the symbol of Islam and that's what's on top of that rock I've been to Jerusalem numerous times, but only once have I been inside that Dome of the Rock. And that was on my first visit years ago. And the rock is still there. Now I'm going to come back to this. This rock is part of the story. So here's the story I want to tell you. It starts with Abraham 2,000 years before Christ. Abraham is the father of Jews, Arabs, Christians. Jews, Christians, Muslims. We all have our spiritual roots in Abraham. He is the father. And so we call these the Abrahamic faiths because they go all the way back. Now, Abraham was born in today what we would call Iraq. And 
I think that's fascinating. He, he, was, he traveled all over the Middle East. He got down to Egypt and he came back and he was living finally in his old age in a place called Beersheba, about 45 miles south of Jerusalem. So that's where he is when my story begins. Now at this point, he's a, about 100 years old and a angel or three angels or as the Eastern churches believe the Trinity came in the personification of three persons came to Abraham and said you're going to have a baby now Sarah the wife was in the tent in her 90s <laughs> she heard this and she laughed but it happened they had a baby and that baby was called Isaac and Isaac grew up and Isaac was just the apple of their eye you can't believe it God had said to Abraham and Sarah you will be blessed your family and they're going to be numerous as the sands of the seas and the stars in the heavens and here they are a hundred years old and hadn't had a baby yet the baby came and you I just try to imagine, I've had three sons, and I just try to imagine what it would be like if you're 100 years old and you get the first one. Uh, <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, you know, a tottering old man with, with this child. And then in, in chapter 21 of Genesis, God says, this child is going to be the promised heir. This child is going to be the father of my people, the child of promise. And then you come to chapter 22 of Genesis to get the beginning of the story that I call the script for Palm Sunday. God wakes up Abraham one day and says, now I want you to take your son on a 45 mile trip up to Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah is that temple mountain space. There were no temples then, but the rock formation was still there. It was there as it is today. And so Abraham and two of his servants bundled up the donkeys to carry the load. And they took and piled wood on one donkey because they were going to have a sacrifice and they would need wood for the fire. Because sacrifice was part of worship in those days. Now they probably had other donkeys carrying the food because they were going to take three days to travel. Three days climbing up the hill. Jerusalem is, um, is about uh, 3,000 feet elevation. And so they're going from low to gradually climbing. And in a sandal culture, on a rocky path, 10, day, 10 miles is considered a day's journey. They went 15 miles. They were moving quickly and you can imagine these donkeys you can I think you can picture them walking on this trail 45 miles that would be up from Seattle to you know to Arlington or past Marysville 45 miles and and but it would be done over a three-day period they'd be walking together carrying the supplies they were going to worship they're going to have a sacrifice when they got to the bottom of the hill where now Jerusalem is, there was no big city then, but maybe a little settlement, um, Abraham turned to the servants and said, you stay here. We will go worship and we will return. Now they started up and then Isaac turned to his father and said, where's the lamb? And Abraham said, God will provide key words God will provide Abraham was also carrying a knife for the sacrifice for the lamb God would provide they got up there at the top of this mount and they they built on this rock called Mount Moriah they put on this rock the wood and then the dad the old man Abraham asked his son to lie on the altar and the son by this time realized he was the sacrifice. It's an unbelievable story. You would rate it at least a PG. And if it 
resulted in his death it'd be an R um, hard to imagine what is the old man thinking what is the kid who submits thinking he could have hit his dad and run away but he didn't do it he volunteered he's laying there and and then they tie him up he ties him up and just as he draws his knife to push it into his heart all of a sudden God stops it and they hear a bleating lamb ram in the bush God did provide they sacrificed the lamb instead of the son and they came back to meet their servants and go back home do you know what this is it's a credit card right when you sacrifice a lamb in the Old Testament what are you doing what are you doing you're making a credit card payment all right that's really what it is basically every family would have to bring a sheep a perfect one without blemish it is said and they would bring it and the the priest would in prayer lay their sins on that animal and the animal would would die as a sacrifice and then the priest would announce to the people your sins have have been forgiven God has accepted the sacrifice but everybody knew this was not a payment this was a credit card payment which is a promise to pay the bill will come later somebody has to pay and if you think about the story when the Jews repeated this they were repeating the remembrance that every time they took a sheep to worship they were postponing a payment they were offering a credit card and God was accepting that in lieu of a payment that would come later hundred years would go by two hundred years a thousand years David the prophets the psalmist would all come and go all offering sacrifices and making payment 2,000 years later God comes into the world as a baby born in Asia who became an African refugee fleeing terror and then grows up in Israel John the Baptist saw him coming and said behold the lamb that takes away the sin of the world John the Baptist saw what God was doing in that moment Palm Sunday is the announcement that the credit card debt is going to be paid that week Jesus gets on that donkey and rides down into the city shows up at the Temple Mount and then turns and goes back the crowd some of them knew who he was were waving palm branches in belief many were waving palm branches thinking he was coming to overthrow the Roman Empire and to give the people freedom that he was going to be the powerful king the agenda was scripted in the Abrahamic story that I tell you what what God was doing was illustrating the terrible penalty that would be paid God himself came as a human being ended up on the cross so when Jesus got on the donkey he was the sacrificial lamb they didn't have to carry wood on the donkey the Romans would provide the wooden cross and all of a sudden you have the holiest week in the Jesus calendar because in the middle of the week he's going to be arrested he's going to be tried he's going to be convicted he's going to be nailed to a prisoner's cross between thieves he's going to pay and in the middle of the suffering and agony before he died he cried out it is finished what was finished he paid the debt for your sin and for mine so the Old Testament saints the Jews of the Old Testament they were saved by faith they looked forward 
They paid with a credit card a sheep to get temporary forgiveness, knowing that the debt would be paid. For 2,000 years, from Abraham to Jesus, that's what they did. And that's the grand narrative of our Bible all through the Old Testament. Now, we live 2,000 years after the cross. We don't need the credit card now. What we do is we're saved by faith in what Jesus did on that cross. In the same way they would be saved ultimately by what Jesus was going to do. We have faith that it's all been done. As I said, Palm Sunday is the beginning of the, of the last week of Jesus, but it's also the 2,000 year old script of how God was going to handle sin and judgment. I have good news today, Seattle Community Church. You don't have to take sheep to church. You don't have to pay the debt. It's been paid. That is the good news. We're not in the good advice business telling you what to do today. We're in the good news business. The news is what Jesus already did. That is good news. And so our Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross paying the debt for all those people who used the credit card sacrificing sheep starting from Abraham to the present. That is the reality that when we come to church we are recreating the drama of our salvation. We are really singing Hosanna and remembering the God who sacrificed for us on the cross and paid for our sin. And so I say, Seattle Church, if, if you've never invited our Lord to take away your own personal sin, you can do it now. Just say to the Lord God, I confess I'm a sinner. Would you take away my sin? I'm trusting Jesus now to pay for my sin on the cross. He did it. It's done. It's finished. And now... I'm set free by the news that the war is over. There's no more need to die for sin. No more need to sacrifice animals. It's finished. Seattle Community Church, that's the good news. We are people who lived 2,000 years after the payment was made. And it includes us. We never have to do anything else. We are trusting Jesus for forgiveness and Jesus paid it all to God be the glory to the earth be peace to Seattle Community Church be hope and to Seattle be great joy Amen <laughs>